Today we will construct this simple linear regulator on a prototyping board. We will then change the input voltage and we will measure the output voltage. And based on the results we will draw some conclusions of what is the disadvantage of having such a linear regulator without the feedback loop. Today's video will be a lot more practical than usual because we will use here this prototyping board in order to put together some of the simple circuits what we are talking about in the video. Then we will use here this external power supply which has an adjustable voltage. So then by playing around with the input voltage what we feed into these circuits then using this multimeter we will measure what is the output voltage as a function of the input voltage. Therefore these conclusions will serve us as a prime material of why we need an error amplifier and a feedback loop even in a linear regulator. Welcome to Donkey Learning IT, where Dr. Donkey will teach you various topics in the field of IT and applied electronics. Let's go! In video number 6 of my Switch Mode Power Supply Repair series, we have introduced the basic concepts regarding the linear power supplies. In video number 6 we already discussed this really simple circuit, where the main idea is that we are feeding in some changing input voltage and we wanna get a really stable output voltage. The simplest way to achieve this was to use a Zener diode in series with a resistor. However, we have not really discussed what happens when we actually build this circuit, so let's go ahead and we are gonna put in some real values now. Although this series is not really focusing on circuit design, we still need to mention two parameters which we need to keep in mind, even when we are looking at a really simple circuit like this one. The first criteria is that the Zener voltage cannot be higher than the smallest input voltage. This is because otherwise the Zener diode would simply not conduct, so if this voltage would go below 3.8 volt, namely here I'm using a 3.8 volt rated Zener diode, then this circuit would no longer regulate at all. Our smallest input voltage will be 10 volt, and the Zener voltage is well below that value, so from that perspective we should be on the safe side. The second criteria is that the amount of current which is flowing here through this circuit cannot be higher than the maximum rated current for the Zener diode. In my case the maximum rated current is 50 milliamps, so I would like to stay between 10 to maximum 50 milliamps. And this is why I chose this 330 ohm series resistor. Here is this simple circuit built on the prototyping board. Next we will measure the voltage across the Zener diode with a multimeter as a function of the input voltage. The idea is that we will do a series of measurements where we will increase the input voltage in 1 volt increments between 10 to 15 volts and then across the Zener diode we will measure the voltage. So we will start out with an input voltage of 10 volt here and then we will note down that the output voltage on the Zener diode is about 3.76 volt or so. Then as a next measurement point we gonna bump up this voltage to 11 volt and then note down that value and this way in 1 volt increment we will go up to 15 volt and see how does that look like. After we have went through the whole set of measurements, now we can then plot the output voltage which is the same in our case like the Zener voltage since we are just measuring the voltage across the Zener diode as a function of the input voltage. By putting in all the values then we have obtained this plot here what you see. So what kind of conclusions can we make based on this curve here? First of all we used the 3.8 volt rated Zener diode, so we expected to have an output voltage of roughly 3.8 volt. As you see we are kinda sort of close enough at the beginning when we have an input voltage of 10 volt. However, as we are rising the input voltage, accordingly also the Zener voltage is slowly rising up. This deviation is what is being called a drift of a Zener diode. This typical drift in the Zener diode voltage is being caused by two major phenomena, namely first of all the Zener diode will slowly heat up because of the heat difference then also the Zener voltage itself will slightly change so that could be improved by so called thermally compensated Zener diodes. 
However, the second problem is even more important, namely the so-called change in the avalanche current. When the avalanche current increases, then also our Zener voltage will then change accordingly. Due to this drift in the Zener voltage, in modern power supplies, especially when it comes to switch mode power supplies, nowadays we are not really using Zener diodes when it comes to voltage references. So don't misunderstand my statement. We still use Zener diodes, but not for the purpose of a precision voltage reference. Although a Zener diode is not as good as a precision reference, nevertheless, let us think about what really happens here. So we start out with 10 volt feed voltage, then we increase this input voltage to 15 volt. This means that our input voltage changes with 50%. Now, in strong contrast to that, as you see, the output voltage only changes a little bit from 3.8 volt roughly to 3.9 volt. So overall, the change, if we calculate the difference here between the two voltages, is only about 0.14 volt, which means that we have a maximum deviation of about 3.7% meaning that our Zener diode is still quite good when it comes to stabilizing the output voltage compared to the change in the input voltage. This is because in contrast to a 50% change in the input voltage range, we only get about a 3.7% change in the output voltage range. In order to discuss the other major shortcoming of such a simple circuit consisting only of a Zener diode and a series resistor, now in the next step we will place in as a load a lamp which is then producing a relatively high load and let us measure then what is gonna happen. So now again we switch over to the other set of measurements. We have 10 volt input voltage, we have then the Zener diode as usual we have this 3.76 volt or so and here we have the lamp prepared as a load and now let us see what happens when I'm gonna plug in this lamp as load. You should pay attention of the current here and also what happens to the output voltage. So I'm gonna plug it in. As you can see two things happen. First of all the current flowing through the circuit slightly increases to around 30 milliamps or 40 milliamps. However, you should also notice that the output voltage drops down to very close to zero. It is almost zero, it's only 80 or 90 millivolts. So at this stage the question is, can we use this small circuit here in practice to power a lamp? And of course, crystal clearly the response is no, because the voltage is almost going down to zero, which is no good. It's completely useless for us. Now let us think about why is our output voltage almost zero. That is no good, so there has to be a reason. Just by looking at this simple diagram, it is kind of easy to understand where the problem is. Namely, the impedance or let us say the resistance of this lamp is very very low. It is in the order of about only 3 ohms. So it means that here practically this path is a short circuit in comparison to 330 ohm resistor right here. So practically what happens is that the current flows here into this resistor, it almost no longer flows through the Zener diode and all flows just through this lamp. As we have mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have chosen the value of this resistor such that we had to limit the maximum current which can flow through the circuit and we had to limit this current below 50 milliamps. Of course, when we have here now a lamp, 50 milliamp is not even close enough to heat up the filament. So in practice we are simply limited by ohm's law, since we cannot push here more than 50 milliamps through this circuit, it means that on the lamp we will have a voltage which is very close to zero, no matter what we do in this case. So in addition to the drift of the Zener voltage, the second major drawback with this circuit is, that we cannot really take much power out of the Zener regulated voltage, namely we can have only a very small amount of current flowing through the circuit, therefore in practice we can use this simple circuit only to power small devices which require very very little amount of power.
Since having a simple Zener diode and the resistor is not really practical for any type of load where we wanna have some current, this is why in video number 6 we already discussed that we will add some sort of power transistor to this circuit. So after we have discussed the simple Zener diode and series resistor circuit, we can see that at the end of the day this circuit is really similar, namely we are feeding in here some input current and input voltage and a small portion of the current will flow in this direction. It will then flow through this series resistor, which is in series with the Zener diode. This means that across the Zener diode we will produce a relatively stable output voltage. Then we gonna take advantage of a nifty trick here, namely we gonna use this power transistor where the collector of the power transistor is then being connected to the same point where we are feeding in the input voltage, whereas the base of the power transistor is then being connected to this point where we have a relatively stable voltage made by our Zener diode, and then on the emitter of the power transistor we will have some output voltage. Now this type of circuit here when we have the collector going to the input voltage and the emitter going to some output is what is being called an emitter follower and that is because the voltage on the emitter will try to follow as good as it can the voltage what we are feeding into the base, so if the voltage in the base is stabilized by our Zener diode, then also the output on the emitter side should follow this voltage and it should be more or less stabilized. As you might notice, there is a huge advantage here. Namely, we are splitting the current at this point and we know that we can feed in only very little current here going into the Zener diode. However, the power transistor is able to take a lot of current in contrast to the Zener diode, so a very large portion of the current is then flowing through this power transistor and this way we are able to feed some load which is really using a lot of current. Of course, the overall circuit here is still a linear regulator where our power transistor now have the role of nothing else but a glorified power resistor, namely a variable value power resistor which is now in series with our load similar to this resistor which was in series with our Zener diode. So now we gonna build this circuit on the prototyping board. Next then we will change the input voltage in the range of 10 to 15 volt with 1 volt increments as usual. And then we will measure what is the output voltage on our lamp using the voltmeter. Before I plug in this power transistor into the circuit board, first I'm gonna turn off the power supply or turn it down. As my favorite rapper would sing, turn down for what? Uh, because I don't really wanna destroy this poor transistor. Now we will build in this power NPN transistor into the circuit. As you see, I'm using here some small aluminum plate as a heatsink because this thing will be really toasty. So then let's stick it in. As the load, I will use the same lamp like in the previous example where we had only this Zener diode in the circuit. Here the lamp as load will be connected between the emitter of the NPN power transistor and the ground of the circuit. Now we will measure the voltage on the lamp as the load as the function of the input voltage here coming from the power supply. And as you remember when we had only the Zener diode in the circuit then the lamp was not lighting up because we just don't get enough current through it and let us see what happens this time. So now we are feeding in as input voltage about 10 volt. You should notice that now with the power transistor actually my lamp is lighting up. I don't know how well you can see that. So there is some light on the lamp and the output voltage is about 3 volt give or take. After we are done with our set of measurements, now we should be able to plot the output voltage, which is the voltage across the lamp, as a function of the input voltage in the range of 10 to 15 volt. By plotting the resulting values we obtain this red curve here which is obviously looking different compared to the black curve which was the curve for our simple Zener diode circuit. So then what is causing the difference between the two curves? 
First of all, the most obvious difference is that the Zehner diode voltage is about 0.6 or 0.7 volt higher compared to the output voltage in the case of our power transistor emitter follower. So coming back to our circuit diagram, this means that the voltage here, what we measure across the load, is almost always about 0.6 or 0.7 volt lower compared to what we are feeding into the base of the transistor. This is caused by the fact that this transistor here is having a so-called PN junction, namely if we would look only at this portion here of a transistor, then this would be nothing else but a forward diode, so it means that we are losing some voltage across this diode, and for silicon based transistors this forward BIOS voltage, what we are losing is exactly in the order of 0.6 to 0.7 volt. So this more or less systematic downward shift in the output voltage when we use a power transistor can then be explained by this forward BIOS voltage what we are losing between the base and the emitter of the power transistor. Now by looking at this red curve there is another feature here which differs compared to the Zener diode, namely when we are going above 14 volt input voltage then suddenly our circuit is not behaving the same way like when we had only a single Zener diode and that is because now the transistor is heating up and the more input voltage we are feeding in the more amount of heat we need to dissipate on the transistor and at this stage the transistor is getting really really hot this is why the output voltage is suddenly starting to drop Whereas if we look at the Zener voltage, the Zener voltage is slightly rising even when we are increasing the input voltage from 14 to 15 volt. Just as a reminder, when we looked at the Zener diode, we found that for this input voltage range of 10 to 15 volt, the overall deviation of the output voltage was only 0.14 volt, which is about 3.7%. Now if we look at the deviation of the output voltage in the case of the combination of a power transistor with the Zener diode, in the range of input voltages from 10 to 14 volt we will find that actually our maximum deviation is considerably higher. To put it into perspective, the maximum deviation is more than twice higher compared to the Zener diode drift voltage, which means that the simple combination of a Zener diode and power transistor is just not good enough anymore. In order to improve the stability of our linear regulator circuit, as I will show you in the follow-up video, we will need to introduce some extra components, namely an error amplifier and also we will need to do a so-called negative feedback loop. I hope this video have been informative and after you have watched it then you are saying the same thing like in some of the South Park episodes that you know I learned something today from Dr. Donkey.